it made me feel good in the way that I kind of was able to reconsider the local landscape because uh, in a way the, the bins became part of the landscape much more. The way that the, it felt like the colours that were that being put in the bins reflected what was around and. Uh, it kind of made me think of, uh, you know, these kind of little bits of urbanity which are scattered about, you know, maybe they're part of what we consider the natural landscape anyway. So previously when I was thinking that, you know, nature should be natural, now I'm thinking it's okay to have little man-made bits in there. And I think that's what they're trying to get at, is the kind of assimilation between man-made landscape and, and proper landscape, you know, proper natural landscape. Um, I'm just trying to draw, draw attention to maybe the kind of refuse and detritus of nature, we're kind of maybe not concerned with sometimes, we discard, you know, burn sometimes. You know, it's a, nature's detritus can be an attractive. I get this kind of feeling that sort of industrialisation is kind of fairly bleak, Victorian kind of. Fairly dark. Um, the obvious thing with railings, or, or that is, is a kind of a sense of, uh, of breaking up areas and, and ownership of areas and, and being excluded from various areas, and whether or not you should, you know, be privy to. to to, to see other parts of areas or the pictures that I've seen in there, the paintings I've seen in there, would correspond or co correlate to the same kind of pictures of just a fairly bleak uh, but I, I'm just thinking of some of the, the churches I've seen in there and that's, that, that co correlates with the kind of the, the railings uh, incredible sense of frustration really about you know, making proposals and endlessly submitting them and only getting so few okay. realised and <laughs> the investment. I mean I know it's about kind of financial investment in a way but you can see all the, it doesn't talk about the imaginative and creative investment that goes into artworks but you can feel it there somehow. It made me think of also about you know, the processes I go through as a, as a curator, having to fund, find money to fund projects. And that, that, that road we get dragged down all the time of having to make a, a business case almost for artwork now, for it to be realised. Sort of Kerry Young's work, which is about you know, that sort of interplay of art and business in particular, and sort of taking people through a, a kind of business case. And, I felt, in a way, quite nostalgic. I like things involving receipts and memory, and, but at the same time, it seemed appropriate to the, the specific situation of Leeds and the kind of the less than robust economy for the arts that we that seems prevalent at the moment. It was a bit confusing because you, when you're looking at a map, you kind of expect it to be clear and you know what you're looking at. Yeah. So when, you, when someone takes that and has their own interpretation of it and portrays it in a different way, you're kind of working out what they mean and what they're referencing. Yeah, there, there were quite a few things that I didn't understand and I didn't recognise. Um, it was like a bit disorientating. Like it looked, it looked like a city, like a map of Leeds, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't. Mm, yeah. Because uh, the cover was very clear. It looked like mm. you know you expected to know what you. You expected to know what you'd expect to find in it, and then when you open the pages, you're like, oh, what is this? It's confusing. What does this mean? So I kind of thought it was them trying to portray another vision of the city onto people, trying to sort of give a maybe personal view of their experience of the city and maybe. put it in a, a conventional format. Yeah, may, maybe it was the artists trying to like take you on their own individual journey around Leeds. Yeah, totally. It totally reminded me of that thing I saw in Sheffield about um, a year and a half ago at the. Oh God, what was it? It was the. It was that. Um, oh, what was that massive festival in Sheffield? The film festival. No, 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 no. It wasn't a film festival. <laughs> It was like it was like spectator tea. That was like spectator oh. tea, and it was at a gallery um, 
near the big, those big sort of student art um, studios, and, um, and it was like a city of, of Sheffield, but it, it totally wasn't at all. Was it a 2D thing? Or? No, yeah, it was a 2D, it was like a, just like a normal fold out, something you'd get at the tourist like, information. Center. And how was it different? What, what was it? Well, it was just, it just, it, it was like the shape, it was the shape of Leeds, but all like the landmarks were different. I mean, I don't know Sheffield very well. But um, I knew that some of the landmarks weren't right. So. I think um, looking at the the aspects of Leeds that you can't categorise in a normal way. So when you look at a map and you have the landmarks and you have certain areas and it's all you know you've got all categorised in a formal way. You're trying to look beyond that and look at people's experiences of a city and different ways that you can categorise things and represent the city within a traditional format, but sort of focusing more on different aspects. Um, I don't think I felt any of that. Did you know? No, I, um, I don't know what I thought actually. Confused. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, may, maybe sort of like more, more like a personal map of Leeds, maybe. Yeah. It was nice to have other people who knew where they were going. So like David Shrigley's pigeons in the park sort of thing because you notice the little details about Leeds that you wouldn't notice otherwise. Ownership over the city in some way, um, a desire to share the city through the medium of the festival. It made me feel involved because sometimes art can seem very exclusive and alienating. Particularly the participatory events where you actually engage with the artists and the artist groups. Hmm. I would hope that they were trying to break down barriers to accessing art and um, were hoping to make people who felt uncomfortable with traditional art forms more involved and, and feel that they can, if they have a part in it, they see that it's um, quite open-ended, that they can, they can be involved, that they feel more involved in it. Well, I don't know, I, I, I think probably from a, no, I, I, I can see what you mean, but I'd probably see it from a less arty angle, just say that it might just be for people to think about space in terms of how they live with people, work with people, react to people, how private and public space fit together, how they um, merge or clash, and, and not necessarily related only to art, but maybe to, I don't know, life in general. could also remind you of something like Tracy Emin and her bed, which is a very private space. I think it was just trying to make us think how we relate to one another in, in the way that it kind of um, had quite strange subject matter and, and was quite disoriented. It reminded me of Benedict's work. Um, at first I was quite surprised by it. I kind of felt it did something new to me. So it kind of, I don't know, at first it felt like a... Kind of, it was slightly disorientating and kind of uh, made me very aware of my own um, body and my own self against this artwork because it kind of took over um, the room quite a lot so it's quite surprising in that way. Um, but then after sort of a few moments when I took in, after this initial surprise, I felt a bit more comfortable and then I began to quite enjoy it and find it as, it was quite a sarcastic piece of art so it made me laugh a little bit and sort of found myself giggling to myself only a slight bit because, you know, I was slightly aware of all the people around me um, who weren't giggling so much but, um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was an enjoyable experience. After that I took away um, you know, I really enjoyed the colours that it was projecting and kind of, I don't know, that was that was playing with my mind slightly. So yeah, it was a combination of, of kind of being slightly surprised and feeling quite, um, but then being quite, it's quite humorous, so I warmed up the piece quite a lot. Um, I did think about it um, for a few days afterwards, it kept sort of springing up into my mind and, um, Kind of, you know, and when I went and stood, it would be some time random when I'd be buying a, a coffee at a coffee shop, and I'd suddenly remember how strange an artwork it was, and think, oh, I wonder how they made that and stuff. It would just occur in my brain a, a few days more. So yeah, I think it was a really successful piece of art in that way. It made me think about it or think about myself quite in a different way.